Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you guys doing today? Um, been busy. I'm all windblown. Uh, but I got into a conversation this morning, and it struck me as odd. At first, I thought he was on point, but then uh, the more he talked, the more I realized he was trying to, he's trying to teach a false doctrine. And uh, I warned him in my last uh, post, in my last uh, response to him, you know, that he needs to be careful what he teaches, because the Bible says if you even lead one to destruction, that blood is on your hands, and you will have to give an accounting for that, um, whether you're saved or not. Um, and, and that's a dangerous game, and that's also a, a big responsibility. People that put out the scriptures, people that try to teach, people that share the gospel, it's to be careful what you're teaching people, because if it's not from the Bible, uh, you put yourself in a very precarious position. You put yourself in a, in a dangerous position to be at enmity with God. And it's real easy to get into that. Uh, I'm starting to see a pattern where there's a lot of people out there who are uh, they're, they're digging their faces deep into Strom's Concordance. They're digging their faces deep into um, the uh, number codes and the secret codes and the secret message. Oh, you guys are killing me. The Bible was put together the way it was specifically for the purpose that anyone, the simplest among us, can read the scriptures and understand what the message is. And the message is love in all things. Turn away from sin. Be saved and have salvation through Jesus Christ. Very simple, basic message. And, and it, the Bible even says, you know, don't have your hearts turned away from the simplicity that is Christ. Um, Watching on the Wall 88 shared that scripture today. So it's disheartening to see people. It looks like they start out really good, but then they start getting into, I've got to find out what the secret is. I've got to find out what uh, this mystery is. I've got to dig deep into this stuff. While the search for knowledge is admirable and it is, it is akin to, to being with God, you can get yourself confused very easily if you get too deep into that. Because what happens is, is that people get so deep into Stroms, deep into the number conversions, deep into translations, and they keep retranslating it back and forth. They forget what the actual Bible says. And they forget what the face value interpretation is of it. That's what I give you guys. Face value interpretation. No mysteries, no secrets. Take it out straight from the scripture. That's why I give you all, all the scriptures. What happens is, is that you start to discover these other things and then people forget what the Bible says and they start rewriting the Bible and rewriting the scriptures. Um, and I see it posted all the time. They'll go in there and they'll post some weird name, which is something they found in Strom's, and they start typing out this scripture and it does not match the Bible at all. It's totally different. And they're basing a doctrine on this and the people start creating a new doctrine. This is very dangerous. It's very important that you keep everything based and solely on the core message of what the Holy Bible teaches. It doesn't matter what interpretation you get. The same core message comes from all of them, even though there might be a little different on details. But it's dangerous because if you lead people astray, that's counted against you. And I worry about that all the time. I'm always praying to the Lord and telling him, give me your words. Don't let me teach something that's wrong. Don't let me put out an improper interpretation or improper message. Give it straight from, I want it straight from you to pass it on. And because uh, I worry about putting out something that isn't biblical and something that's not true and, and causing someone to stumble. I don't want to do that. The Bible says don't do that. But this guy is just, he's going on and on. And what's funny is, is that I gave him a whole a link to a bunch of scriptures that show, because he's talking about the Trinity. That's the big misunderstanding. He says that it's not three, it's only one. And that the Bible teaches that wrong. Well, he didn't actually say the Bible teaches it wrong. He hinted at that, but he says that this is a Catholic doctrine. Problem is, the Bible refers to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as three separate entities, continually. But it says they are all one spirit. So when you have, what you have to understand is, and it, it, the same applies to us. When you become a Christian, God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, enters into you. You have to understand that the personality, the soul, is what makes you a different, different entity. The Spirit's the same as God's. It's all from God. It all comes from Him. It's all a part of Him. That's why Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Yet, be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, if it's referring to Him as three, but says they are one, are they one or are they three? Well, they're three. And they're one at the same exact time. The Spirit is what's the same. We are all the body of Christ. We are all of one spirit, one mind, one heart, one soul, one, one mind, you know, but we're separate individual entities in that we have our own personality. We have our own free will. Jesus said, uh, not my will, but the Father's. Well, if they're both one, wouldn't it be the Father's will anyway? Why would he say, not my will, but the Father? Because he's a separate entity. 
He has a, a separate existing being. Now, if it was the case where everything was just of God, when we all died, when Jesus died, everything would have just gone back into God. It would have just been God. If Jesus said, not my will, but the Father's will, why wouldn't he just say, the Father's will? Um, you know, there's, I can go scripture after scripture. I'm going to give you a bunch of them. But this guy has completely just gone off the rails saying, it is not three, it's one. And I pointed out to him, then why does the Bible refer to them as three? Why does it say they are three? Why does it, I gave him, I, I gave him a link to all the scriptures and showed it to him. And I did it in love. I, did, I wasn't nasty to him. And I blessed him. And he just, he's so caught in this doctrine. But I found out there's a lot of other people that support him by looking through the comic section. It's like, oh, you guys. While he's right, they are all one. They are three also. Because if it was all just God, there'd be no purpose for us to have free will. We would do automatically, by default, what God wants. There would be no purpose to have free choice. We would automatically choose what God wanted for us. But we don't. We have the free will to choose what we want. He gave us that. Why? Because we're a separate entity. We are a separate individual personality from his spirit. So I'm going to give you scriptures that are going to show you where his spirit indwells in us. Jesus says, I am, the fa I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But yet Jesus is still a separate entity. Um, and then also when Jesus was baptized, you hear Jesus speak, then the Holy Spirit descends as a dove, and then you hear the Father's voice from heaven. So if they're all one, why wouldn't they all just write there in Jesus? It's three separate entities. Um, the Bible says the Holy Spirit gives gifts to whom he wills to each as they can handle or deal with it. Well, why is the Holy Spirit have his own will? If, if he's just of the Father, it would be the Father gives the gifts as he wills. They, there's a reason why the Bible lists everything differently. Why are there so many different angels if it's all God? Why would you have individual entities doing individual things? Because they have the power of choice. They have free will to do what they want. God created it all, but he gave everything, everybody the, the, the choice and the free will to choose what they want to. That's why you have people that don't choose God. They choose Satan and they go after him. They choose their themselves. That's why you have that. Because if it was all just God, then everything, everybody would do exactly what God wanted to do all the time, every time. There's a reason why it's listed as three. So I'm going to give you this. Remember, I'm not teaching you that it's just three or just one. I'm teaching you that it's both because that's what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians 8, 6, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. So it's referring to him as two separate things, but also as one thing. If it was just of God, they wouldn't have mentioned Jesus Christ at all. Jesus Christ wouldn't have had to come and have a different name. But he also said that Jesus Christ wasn't his real name. I don't know where he got that from. If it wasn't his real name, then why would it be in the Bible? And clearly, he's calling scriptures, different scriptures, a lie. Because he's denying them. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 2 Corinthians 13.14 May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It just listed three different things. Why? Because they're three different ent entities, but they're all one Spirit. They're all joined. Colossians 2.9, for in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily, bodily form. Christ is God in a bodily form. But the mind of Christ, like everybody, uh, the Bible says, uh, who, who knows the mind of God? Who can understand the mind of God? Yet we understand the mind of Jesus Christ. He came here. We know what he was thinking. And yet he referred to himself as being separate from the Father and of the Father at the same time. So it's both. Isaiah 9.6, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It listed him as several different things there. Isaiah 44, 6, this is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me there is no God. Him and God are one. John 1, 14, the world, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now it lists them as two different things. John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. Now they're 
they're one. But listen to what he said. I and the Father are one. He's referring to two different things that are one thing. Personality, spirit, two separate things. Soul and spirit, two separate things. Luke 135, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One, to be born, will be called the Son of God. It's referring to several different things there. If that was just God, it would say, the Spirit of God will come upon you and the power of God will overshadow you. So God, to be born, so the God to be born will be called God. If it's just one, only one, you would have to eliminate all the other references. It's just God. But it's not. It's separate entities, separate personalities, separate wills. Matthew one twenty three: The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Matthew 28.19 Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three separate things. Why would he say, be baptized in three separate names when he could just say, be baptized in the name of God, if it's all just one? I'm just showing you what the scriptures say. The scriptures clearly list them as all three different things. They are of God, but they are in separate entities from God. They operate differently and on a different, they operate independently of God, yet they are of the same spirit. Matthew 3, 16 and 17, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven, Jesus is standing on the ground in the river Jordan. The, the Holy Spirit, in the shape of a dove, is on his shoulder. A heaven, a, God, a voice from heaven said, this is my son who I love, and with him I am well pleased. If it's just one, why would there be a descending uh, dove in re referencing the Holy Spirit? And why would God be speaking from heaven? It was just God. He would have just come down. You see what I'm getting at? Totally different. And he says, in whom I am well pleased. Well, so God's pleased with himself? Jesus is a separate entity. The Holy Spirit is a separate entity. They are all one spirit, but they are three separate things. Three separate individuals. John 14, 16, and 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. Right there, listed three different things right off the bat. And I will ask the Father to give you a helper. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. That's the Spirit indwelling, indwelling of the Spirit. Romans 14, 17 through 18, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. These are gifts from the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval, literally lists three different things. Luke 3, 21 through 22, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove. I'm going to stop right there. There's more to this, but I'm going to stop right there and point something out. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And he was praying. Who was he praying to? God the Father. If he's just God, why is he praying to himself? Doesn't make sense, does it? Because they are three and one at the same time. Same spirit, different personalities. Um, the, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Three separate references for three separate beings, three separate entities. They all, it all comes from God, but you have your own will, you have your own personality, you have your own way of thinking. Compared to that, if it was all the same, then there wouldn't be no free choice. There wouldn't be no free will. Yet we have that, don't we? And that was given to us by God. We are separate, but yet we are the same, especially when you come to love the Lord and you follow him and believe in him. Then the indwelling of the Holy Spirit directly attaches you to God's spirit. Genesis 1, 1, 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. It didn't say God was hovering over the waters. It said the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. That's the Holy Spirit. That's two separate things. 
1 John 5, 7 through 8. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. They are of, the, of one Spirit. But there's three of them. It says they are three. The Holy Spirit, or, or God. Uh, let's see, the Spirit would be uh, the Holy Spirit. Water, or the Spirit would be God. The water would be the Holy Spirit. And the blood is Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2. Or 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the province of Pontius, Galatia, and Cappadocia, Asia, and uh, Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. It lists three separate things. If it was just about God and it was only God, it would only have said God. It would not have said the Spirit, Jesus, and God. 2 Corinthians 1, 21-22. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. If it was just God, he would have to come down and indwell in us. He'd not send his spirit down here. It's separate. 1 Corinthians 12, 4-6. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. These are different kinds of service. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. It lists three different things, but it says they're all, all the same. They're all part of the same thing. So you see what I'm talking about here with these scriptures? They are three separate things, and they are of the same thing all at the same time. It's not just one. And this guy built a huge doctrine on this. And getting very, in his video, he was very adamant that people who believe that there are three there's something very wrong with them and it's blasphemy and he was getting mad at them and it's like, come on man ephesians 4 4 through 6 there is one body one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is over all and through all and in all so it lists three but it says they're all together they're all in one we, when we come to the Lord, we are born into him and his spirit, spirit indwells in us. And that's what makes us change. That's what makes us become different. That's what gives us the desire to follow him, do what he told us to do, repent, have a, uh, live a righteous lifestyle, do for others. Colossians 1, 15 through 17, the son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So it's listing two different things, God and the Son. And it refers to two different things. John 14, 9-11, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. He's referring to himself. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. He's referring to two different things. He literally referred to himself and his own authority. That it wasn't that. It was God's authority that was doing this thing in him. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. He's talking about the same being the same of the same spirit. Philippians 2, 5 through 8, and your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Now, that statement right there, if you read between the lines, in your relationships, it takes two to make a relationship, or three, depending on his friends, with one another, separate people, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. So it's talking about, he's referring to two different people. Who, being in very, being in very nature God, who, be, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Now here he's actually, Jesus put himself below God. If it's all God, why is he lowering himself below God? Why is, why is the reference of God and the Son different? Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, 
even death on a cross. Guys, I can't beat this point home enough. Now, I'm not condemning this other guy at all. Uh, what I am doing is what the Bible says, test the spirits to see that they are of God. And the doctrine he's preaching is not correct. Because he, he's dead set that it is only one and everything else is blasphemy. Well, you're denying all these scriptures I'm reading because all of these scriptures say they are three and one. And I pointed that out to him and he, he told me that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. You're, you're wrong. Well, I'm not. The Bible says it. John 10. I'm going I'm to read this last one. John 10, 30, and 30, 30 through 36. I and the Father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents uh, picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy. Because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Did you catch what was going on there? They said what he was saying was blasphemy, saying that they are, being different, are one person. And that's opposite of what this guy's doing. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. Now he's referring to us, plural, not God, but gods. That means they're different. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the Father set apart? Different entities, different people set him apart as his very own, and sent into the world. Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's son? It doesn't get any easier than that. Where these people come up with this stuff? I mean, I know where it comes from. It comes from doing too much study in the wrong things and forgetting what the Bible actually says and what the scriptures actually says. I said it over and over again. This is our guidebook for life. This is our guidebook for what we are to do and what we are to share, what we are to preach to other people. And it's really hard, especially when you're a new Christian. It, it takes a while to develop and to grow. That's not a bad thing. That's how it was set up to be to be done. You start out in, in a, on milk. The Bible says you start with milk and then you graduate to meat. And that's based on your understanding and how it develops. You start with, I'm saved. Then you graduate up to, okay, now it's time to start repenting or turning away from that sin lifestyle. So you start working on that, reading the scriptures and growing in knowledge and growing in faith. It's a building process. It doesn't just instantaneously happen. It's, you build up to it. You grow to it. Uh, look at uh, Moses was 40 years in the wilderness and then spent another 40 years in the wilderness with the Jews, or the Israelites. And it was more, he was growing and growing and growing because he started out, he was denying God. And at the end, he was fully supporting God. And even during that time, he still denied God. When God said, strike the rock with your stick, and he hit it twice, he said, nope, because you can't listen. You can't see the, 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 the promised land. And so Moses wasn't allowed to go into the promised land. But even after all that time, all that life, he was like 100 years old, 80 to 100 years old, and he's, he's still, after all that time being with the Lord, walking with the Lord, still was denying him. It's a growth process. None of us are perfect, and none of us will ever get it perfect. And it don't matter how long you live, you will not get it perfect because this right here is weak. When we get in the new body, that's the one that can hold on to that stuff. That's the one that's incorruptible. That's the one that doesn't require sin, doesn't get tempted. And that's the one that we will be able to do our best worship in. That's our salvation, is to be taken up and be trans transfigured. We have our ticket within us, and that's the Holy Spirit. To, for our salvation and our, our transfiguration. But back to the subject. This guy and many like him are, are building and teaching false doctrine based on what they think they find in these other references. Not realizing these other references are not part of the Bible and they're not biblical. These are meant to help your understanding of the Bible. Not for you to create a new doctrine and not for you to create or try to write another Bible, which many have done. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses write, wrote their own Bible. Uh, some Catholic, uh, different parts of the Catholic Church wrote their own Bible. Um, uh, Mormons write, wrote their own Bible. I, I'm trying to go on and figure out all the other ones. There's a bunch of them. that they, they literally took the Bible, rewrote the scriptures to match their agenda. Well, that part's not right. Though. I'm going to change that. If you go into, into your Bible and write an S next to a word in there, and that's a reference word to something else. You've changed the meaning of that. 
he said very clearly, and it's in Revelations, but I believe he was talking about the entire book. Anyone who adds or takes away from these scriptures, I will add or take away the, uh, or I will add to him the plagues from the from this book. So, if if you look, if you you either believe the Bible, or you don't believe the Bible. If you say one verse is wrong and one verse is a lie in the Bible, you're calling the whole Bible a lie, because the Bible every verse supports every other verse. So if you, you prove that by just referencing back and forth. So if you think that this one section here, like the, the group of people that uh, say anything Paul wrote is wrong, that's all a lie. Really? Because God inspired it to be put in the Bible. Why would he let his people be uh, deceived for 2,000 years? Because all that stuff was written way back in 70 AD, 70 and 90 AD. So why would he let, allow his people to be deceived for 2,000 years? He wouldn't. And then suddenly now to give, give certain people a special word? doesn't work that way. And the Bible says it doesn't work that way. He gave us this, and it was aspired to be put this way for a reason. God does things the way he wants to do them. And he does them in his own timeline. And as soon as you realize he is omnipotent, and this is the way it's going to go, and that's it. There is nothing you can do to change it, except for believing in him and following him. Then you understand, this Bible, all, every word of it in here is true. It doesn't matter what you believe or what you found out down, you know, in the past. This person created the... All the people going on about the pre-trib rapture. John Darby invented the pre-trib rapture. Really? Because um, it was given to two other, no, one other apostle. It was given to uh, John. He preached it. Ephraim the Syrian, 1,700 years ago, preached it. And God, there's another 15 other writings they have that talk about a pre-tribulation rapture. All the way back to 2000, almost 2,000 years ago, they, they were preaching this. So if all those people are preaching it, where, where did John Darby came up with nothing? It was already there. He just realized it and saw it. So you got to you know, go do your history. But when I do my research, I come back to the Bible and apply it to Scripture. Does it match Scripture? You've got to have some kind of, some kind of um, base to go off of. So if you don't have a base, you're going to wildly, your, your interpretation is going to vary wildly. Use the Bible as a base. Take all your research and bounce it back off this. If it don't match, you need to ignore it. And for, for your sake, don't preach something that you find that you think is, well, the Bible's wrong, so I'm going to update this. <laughs> the Bible says if you cause one, one to be destroyed, that's on you. So being teachers, what I'm doing right now, I'm taking a heck of a responsibility and a heck of a chance. And I worry about it every day that I'm going to put out something that's wrong. That's why I always give you guys the scriptures to support what I'm saying. And I take it all straight, straight from the scripture. And I just read it to you. It is not one. It is three and one at the same time. All one spirit, separate personalities. Because God can't have three different wills. He has one will. That's how he, he is. He has one will. So Jesus has a separate will because he refers to it. The Holy Spirit has a separate will. The Bible refers to it. What does that tell you? It's three, but they're all one spirit. They're all from the same thing. And now we are, being in Christ, um, having salvation and the saving knowledge of him, having an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, are now part of God. We are now one with God because of that. But yet we're still individuals and we still sin because if that was the case, if it was just God, then we wouldn't sin anymore after we got saved and he indwelled us with the Holy Spirit. Just pointing out what the Bible says. That's it. It's very clear. I love you guys. Uh, be careful who you listen to. Be careful with those guys. And whatever you do, please don't get into big, uh, hardcore discussions with these guys. Because if, if you can't show them the truth with love, and they, they don't seem to see it, especially if they start to curse you, bless them and turn away. Because all you're going to do is end up getting aggravated. And that's what I do. You know, I, I, give them, I gave them the, the scriptures and the links. Gave a very basic, you know, description of what the Bible says and told him, you know, it's not just one. It's you take what I just told you guys and he is not having it. So, OK, you made your decision. I'm not going to go out of my way to try to force you to, to believe something you don't want to believe. God gave you the choice. You choose it. So I love you guys. Be blessed in Jesus name. And he just sent me another message, but I don't think I'm going to read it. <laughs> I already blessed him and left. I'm going to leave it alone. Be careful. Be aware that Satan is working overtime trying to convince people otherwise. And I see a lot of brand new videos coming up.
from people who generally were pretty good, and all of a sudden something changed. So the deception is going out there. Stick with your scriptures. Stick with your Bible. Find people on here. If you're going with the online ministry, find people that read you straight from the scripture. I'm not just saying about me, because I can get it wrong too. But they, they, they bring you the scriptures and support what they do with the scriptures. And uh, just be on guard. Be watchful. Be prayed up. Ask the Lord to give you understanding, give you, you know, discernment, give you his peace and his love. And let's see who all we can save before it's time to go because, man, it's close. See you guys in the next video.